Hello and welcome to live coverage of the Audi Sports R8 LMS Cup. We are here, Sean Hensherwood, at the Shanghai International Circuit. And this is where it all began. This is the emotional hole of the Cup. It's good to be back, isn't it? It's fantastic to be back here doing it at Shanghai International Circuit. So many epic races over the years. We saw it again in qualifying. So close. So many guys really just getting the most out of this circuit. But it always delivers. Never predictable. It's going to be a very, very interesting race. Now, talking about qualifying, local driver Anthony Leo was absolutely devastating. He was a second ahead of the field and actually had a quicker lap that was uh, scratched off because he went past track limits. So he's a second ahead alongside him on the front row of the grid, Alex Al, who of course had two pole positions in Zhuhai, but that didn't work out so well. So what's going to happen here? Well, I was here about four or five years ago when an unknown at that stage, Davide Rizzo and Anthony Liu debuted in a GT event and they blew everybody away. And we thought, who is this guy? He's really quite good. We've seen him in the cup in the past. We've seen him in an Audi R8 LMS GT3 before. He's very, very quick, is Anthony Liu, and he delivered that again during qualifying. So it's gonna be interesting to see. But Alex Al, I mean, what can you say about Alex Al? He started a Juhai on pole position in both races. Didn't work out so well for him. But let's take a look back at Juhai. You'll see exactly what we're talking about. Well, that was rounds three and four of the cup from Zhuhai. We're about to have round five of 10 rounds here at the Shanghai International Circuit. First, uh, well, race wins for Yasser Shine, his first in the cup, and alongside him on the third row of the grid today, Burit Burambakdi, who also won in Zhuhai. Well, after a tough start to the season in Adelaide in Australia, Burrett was very quick but didn't take anything much away from it. Andrew Harrianto had dramas too. They both really needed a solid finish. The conditions in Zhuhai, very, very treacherous, and you saw that on the replay as to what it was like. So it was about a matter of rebuilding championship. Now, Alex Howe, who'll be here be behind us very, very shortly, he's got to start to work on that too because he really was the standout. We all tipped that he would be the man. We did, at yeah. Height. He's done so many miles there. He was so fast. But of course, now we've got to, well, we've got to talk about Anthony Liu. Now, Yasser Shahin is our current championship leader. He has this habit of doing very well the first time he comes to track. He's not a, 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 a rookie here. Can he move up from the third row of the grid today? He hasn't had the easiest of weekends. And one of the things we're talking about with the second season of the Cup in this, this fashion with the semi pro drivers is that. They're so close. You can't afford one minor slip. He lost a little bit of track time in practice yesterday. That's dropped him back a little bit down the order. Now, he's a little bit disappointed in himself that he didn't get more from the car. He's dropped about a second on what he had last year. As you said, this is the second time he's been here. That changes things. But anyway, Shanghai always presents plenty of surprises. Well, it does. I'm going to leave you and head up to the commentary booth. I'll see you in a few minutes, Sean. In a moment, let's set the scene for Shanghai.
return to Shanghai, wouldn't be a return to Shanghai without one of the men who was here right at the start, has been to most of the events we've ever had, in fact all of the events we've ever had with the Cup, Martin Cool, the Director of Audi Sport Customer Racing Asia, you've got a big smile, but it always brings a big smile being back here at Shanghai. Absolutely. It's not only home, it's also one of the best circuits in the world. Everything is top-notch, best facilities, a great racetrack, the drivers love it, they all like to come back because it's usually very good at competitive racing here as well. It's not just out here on the track either, the lounge is full, I don't think I've ever seen it more packed. So many people just enjoying the return of the Cup to Shanghai. I'm also very happy to see that. In general, the feedback, it's like more and more people get interested in motorsport and get excited about it. There's real emotion and uh, yeah, there were a lot of smiles so far this today and I think we have even more smiles when we see the watch, watch the race. Well, weather looks like it might be a bit of a challenge. Let's look, hope we don't have another repeat of what happened at Juhai. I'll let you go because I know you love to speak to the drivers before the start of the race. We'll go down the grid and we'll catch up with you a little bit later. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, mate. Okay, so here we are. We are outside the CTVS races entry of Alex Al. He started from pole position in both races for the Juhai round of the championship. Unfortunately, race one, he didn't get past turn four. Race two, he didn't get out of pit lane. So a little bit of drama, but we hope for the Hong Kong based driver, former Am Cup champion for the Cup, that he will have a good start for this weekend. Of course, Motorsport World on the side of the doors, a new development in Chinese television for Motorsport, and it's great to see the Cup as a part of that, and Alex Au will represent that very, very well. We go next to Alex Au, and of course, that is. That is Anthony Liu as we just break through a photograph. There's, there's, a custom, there's a custom we've had in the past here. We're about to uh, revisit that. I hope it still works. There's been uh, cases in the past where that handshake has led to a victory. We'll see how it goes this time. If it doesn't, I think I'll, uh, I'll leave early. But a good job to, uh, to Anthony Liu on his return to the Cup. We go further back. It's a reigning champion, of course, and that is Andrew Harrianto. The smile's back. The laugh is back. We're talking about mentors. Well, uh, there is the weatherman. We'll see if we can't catch a quick word. Well, Andrew is in the zone. We'll let him go. He's getting into zone red. But I'm going to talk to this man, Wayron Tan. This is great to see these guys so competitive here. Anthony, a real specialist at this circuit. But nice to see Andrew. And also yeah. Burber and Barkti get back into this championship. Yeah. I think a lot of these guys have got so much experience here, especially Anthony. This is his home track. Um, so he's got the slight advantage here. But... The other guys, Andrew's doing really well. Burrit, I think he missed out on qualifying a little bit, so we'll be, we'll be seeing quite an interesting race. I think he'll be trying to make that pace back up again. OK, I called you the weatherman. It's not fair, but what's this going to do? This is a little spooky, really, isn't it? Because it's getting very grey, and there was some talk that there might be drizzling rain. It's a bit like London, isn't it? It's a bit like you really. don't really know when it's going to... That's true. <laughs> well, don't call me the weatherman today. I'll... Well, actually, you can. I'll predict that it'll be dry the whole session. Oh, dear. So, wet weather tyres, guys. I think I'd be going for the wet weather tyres. Angelo Negro, great to see him in the field. Very, very good during qualifying. He's got up to position four. That's the car that Daniel Bilski has taken to second in the outright points. So, that is good for him. Nice to see Angelo in the field. We might just nip back before they remove us from the grid. There is Sun Jing Zhu. Always a great addition to the field. And, uh, well, another of the mentors, Martin Kuhl, it's the Martin Show, and Martin Rump. Frankie Chung, too, another of the mentors there. He's keeping a close eye on Jing Zhu. Of course, has been a big part of this. In fact, I might just sneak over and have a quick word with Frankie. You look a little nervous. Has it got something to do with the weather? Yeah, it looks a little bit dark, huh? <laughs> Jing Zhu's been doing a great job, and a lot of that's down to you. The two of you drive well together in Blanc Pain. He's getting better and better. He won those races last year. He obviously loves this place, and of course, Shanghai is an important part of his career and yours. Uh, absolutely. It's great to see Jing Zhu is uh, moving step by step, and uh, I know that he still would have wished to qualify a bit in front, and, uh, but still, the race is quite long, and uh, there are four cars well, five cars in front of him, and uh, I hope that he's feeling fully relaxed, but uh, fully concentrated, and uh, I wish him uh, have a good race. Wayron didn't want to predict what the weather would be. You've been around here a long time. This is home for you, in, in a sense. What's it going to do? Is it going to rain? No. 
Well, there you go. All right. Okay, so from Frankie, I might say that you can relax. It's not going to be rain. Let's go a little bit further down the grid. Burp and Bakhti back in his primary car. Interestingly, he won the race in the car that Anthony Liu is running this weekend. Last time around at Juhai, he needed points. He did so well in Adelaide. It all came unstuck right at the very end. And it's great to see Burt right back in the field. And he is a great part of this category. We love having him with us. He's doing a great job. You can see the formation lap sign on the dash. I think he's aware of that. Good luck to Burt Berenbakhti. Mark Achun, his second run in the Cup, of course, based the Zun Motorsport crew at Juhai International Circuit. He's been doing very, very nicely as well. We just nip back very quickly to Tony Bates, the Australian, not feeling 100%. Vincent Florendo twice on the podium at Juhai. He did a really, really good job. We need to get off this grid. Of course, the drivers are getting into the zone, and that's zone red. Top stuff, Sean. Well, I'll see you up here in a few moments' time, and you can see that countdown clock. It is a little before 5 o'clock local time here in Shanghai. And the race will be 30 minutes plus one final lap. Let's take a look at this Shanghai International Circuit, home of the Formula One Grand Prix since 2005, typically around April. And a tricky opening sector. One, two, and three. That, that tight, squiggly turns there. Coming around 10, 11, and 12 into the long, long straight into the parabola at turn 14. 16 turns in all. And uh, a pretty popular track with drivers. Plenty of opportunities for overtaking as well. So let's take a look at how we are standing in the championship. In the overall GT3 championship, Yasser Shahin with a pretty hefty lead, 70 points. Daniel Belsky not here, of course. Tony Bates, who's a little bit further down the grid today, in third. Very tight with Jeff Emery and Burit Burin Barkdy. Mark Williamson also not here, leading GT4. So Yasser Shahin with a real opportunity to uh, put some more mileage into his rivals and Yasser Shahin starts from the third row of the grid in position number five so it's going to be pretty interesting the uh you can see from the uh from the weather they're not too hot sometimes at this time of year it can be sweltering in eastern China but this weekend has been pretty cool all things considered 15 second board for the formation lap and it is a rolling start as always here in the cup 13 cars for today's race. Round five, round six will be at a similar time tomorrow. And then two more stops later in the end. Suzuka Japan and Sepang in Malaysia. So let's recap on exactly how things are lined up today. Anthony Leo goes from pole position alongside Alex Au on the front row. Andrew Harianto alongside newcomer Angelo Negro from Italy. Then on the third row championship leader, Yasser Shahin will line up alongside Sun Jing Zhu, who showed so much improvement last year, notching his first race win. Burt Berenbakdi, disappointing by his high standards to be down in seventh with Mark Chun from the Zun Motorsport team in eighth. Tony Bates is in ninth. Vincent Florendo is in 10th. Then the second Zone Motorsport crew driver, Lin Yiming, in 11th position. Sheng Yanwen is in 12th. And Wang Dangjia, rear of field today. So just coming around through four and five. And Martin Rump on the left hand side of the screen, one of the driver coaches. So invaluable. The work that he does alongside Wear on Tan and Frankie Chung. 
with the drivers after every practice session, after qualifying, and of course after the races, to go through the data with the engineers as well and show these gentlemen drivers exactly where they can pick up. Tenths of a second, and hopefully into translate that successfully into improved lap times. So moments away here from round five of the cup at the Shanghai International Circuit with Anthony Leo and Alex Zhao on the front. And Sean, we weren't too lucky with the uh, predictions last time out in Zhuhai, so... Uh, I was waiting for you to throw me under the bus <laughs> and say, so Sean, who do you think is going to win this one? <laughs> Actually, I am. I'm going to say, keep an eye on Anthony Liu in the 37. <laughs> he's got a point to prove. He loves his uh, GT racing. He's been quite successful when he's jumped behind the wheel of an R8 LMS GT4, so I think it's probably a fairly safe bet, but we expected that of Alex Zhao last time round in Zhuhai. Sadly, he didn't get past turn four. He didn't get past the grid for the second race, unfortunately, a technical issue that put him further back down the order. The Absolute Boys down there uh, doing the math. Maybe they're working on weather predictions. Well, series manager Mark Turner uh, issued instructions to the driver and said that it's you know, relatively, it's a sprint race, but they're not won and lost in any one turn uh, or any one lap. But you have to say, particularly with the rolling start, nothing is more important than turn one of the opening lap, Sean. If Anthony Leo can get away and stay in that pole position, he's going to be very, very hard to catch, given that he was, well, clearly the best man in the field this morning. Well, he turned out a 2.15 at one stage. He lost that by uh, going beyond track limits. Now, that was set at the final corner at turn 16, so he obviously used all of the circuit and the AstroTurf and then some to give himself that lap. Funnily enough, Andrew Harrianto did the same. One stage, he was second fastest, and he went, oh, beauty, I've done a 2.11. Looked down at the dash when they took the time away, missed his braking point, spun the car, and that put him further back down the order than he would have liked, but he knew he had pace. So keep an eye on the number 28 entry. Dark grey and gold entry immediately behind Anthony Liu. But this will come down to turns two and three. Who gets the run into turn one and then keeps it through the yin-yang section of the circuit. Lights are still red. Somebody's out of position, but they're going to go. We are underway. Round five of the 2019 Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. Harry Anto down the inside, but how about Alex Al already around the outside? Anthony Liu's been swamped. Yasser Shahin up to position two. Harry Anto on the inside at position three. And Anthony Liu well back. Oh, squeezed. Wow, that was a big move. Down the inside, Yasser Shahin had the door open. Anthony Liu suddenly back up into position number two. He's got the inside run. He knows how to use the car. He'll position himself well. And, uh, well, we're seconds into this race, and Anthony leon has gone from first to fourth to second to third, and here he is still in second. But a lot of action there, almost a bit of contact as well, it looked like, but fortunately no cars off. Tony Bates right up behind Angelo Negro, so he's doing a good job on his recovery, not feeling 100%. Actually went through practice yesterday with a migraine. Said, first one I've ever had in my life was not pleasant, probably one of the most... Un uncomfortable experiences in a race car he's ever had is this battle at the front of the field what can Alex Au do he's been here before he's done some miles and how about Anthony Liu around the outside if you don't mind and takes the position away down to turn nine that was an impressive performance that was track knowledge pure track knowledge that gave Anthony Liu that opportunity he's back to the front he was down as low as fourth position by the time he, time he came through turns two and three He's back to the front of this field now. He needs to just get it all together and start to charge forward. Now, the championship contenders know he's out of the loop a little bit. This is the midpoint of the season, and this is his first run this year. He has a point to prove, though. He wants to take victory, but the drivers behind him will be thinking purely about championship points. That's right. Now, what can Alex Au in second, and, of course, Andrew Harianto in third do to stick with Anthony Leo? He was so much quicker. And we're seeing him uh, set some pretty quick sector times as well at the moment. There's a fairly big split there between uh, Tony Bates and further back down to Burt Burr and Bart. He's well back down the order than we're used to seeing. As uh, Bates, he comes down the inside of Negro, who's been around here before. He's done plenty of miles. Quite experienced driver. He will uh, know the right way to go around this circuit and uh, hold the Australian driver at bay. Of course, this is the very first run for Tony Bates at this circuit. Yasser Shahin has been here before. He's back in position four. He'll be a little dirty on himself too that he lost that second place that he took into turn one as that uh, battle went through. Now, where is Burt Berenbakhti? He's well down on where we would expect him to be. It looks like he's back there with uh, Vincent Florendo back in about positions eight or nine. That is further back than we expect to see, Burt Berenbakhti. So has there been something going on? Because I noticed Jingzu is just coming through the final corner now. So he's well back down the order. So there could have been drama. 
He's mixing it with the GD4 entries further down the field. So something has taken place we've missed whilst we've been watching at the front of the field where the action had been. Well, there was something in sector two, Sean, with Sun Jing Zhu, who started from the third row of the grid. He's now down in 12th position. So he uh, perhaps had a little spin. Not sure if he took out any of the others alongside him. But Yasser Shahin moving up to fourth position. Tony Bates, a big winner from lap one, moving up three spots up to sixth. Uh, those are the main changes with uh, with Burritz, of course, moving down to ninth position now. I don't know what track conditions are going to do. I mean, the overcast conditions, it's a little bit cooler perhaps than it, uh, it was yesterday. So that might uh, just set the teams back a little bit because a, a change in temperature and the overcast nature can change the dynamic of the circuit. So it might be the big difference between the teams that have perhaps got that set up right and the teams that maybe just missed the window a little bit and that could be what's uh, been a bit of an issue for Burrit but of course Burrit started somewhere near Jingzu there's a windscreen wiper on in his car but I notice he's the only one the two Zon Motorsport crew entries there battling too it's Mark Chun no it's uh, Lin Ming who's got the better of his teammate and he is hanging on at the moment to position number seven Oh, nice move up the inside of Burrett. Of course, he is experienced. He has run strongly around here before. Interesting to see the windscreen wiper is on, but uh, no one else at this stage has done that. It doesn't appear to be damp. Certainly, if it is, we're not going to take much notice of uh, Frankie Chung's predictions any further, are we? I mean, he, he told us it's going to be dry. <laughs> he guaranteed it, Sean. Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, I'm not so sure about uh, Wei Ron Tan. We'll leave that one alone. Well, but he's still... Still, perhaps, he, perhaps it's got stuck. Mark and Sean trying to battle onto the tail of Vincent Florendo, who had a brilliant return to the Cup. Of course, he was a former Am Cup competitor. He made a return last time out of Juhai, made the podium in both races. So that was a perfect start. 2.079. We saw a laps in the 2.05s during qualifying, so he's setting the pace. He's currently well clear at the front of the field. Anthony Liu leading Alex Au. Andrew Harrianto in position three, the reigning champion. As this battle goes on between the Zun Motorsport crew entries and the absolute racing entry of Vincent Florendo. Well, Anthony Leo at the moment absolutely destroying the field from the front, and we thought he was going to be away and clear. That wasn't the case. Somehow he went backwards off the start down to fourth, but he has put that right very, very quickly, just five minutes into this race, and he has opened up a sizable lead with a 2.07, and his next quickest rival, 2.10, Alex Al and Harry Anto in second and third respectively. So he is pulling a pretty large gap. Now there's two things to consider this weekend in championship points, of course. Yasser Shahin leads on 70. Daniel Bilski not here this weekend. He's on 48. Tony Bates on 44. So currently Yasser has Tony Bates covered. Burt Burr and is the next one who may creep in. He's got him well and truly covered too. Alex Al will be making inroads into the championship advantage of the drivers ahead of him. So this is important there. The other thing to keep in mind too is Vincent Florendo, Burt Burr and and Yasser Shahin are up for the first of three seats in the Suzuka 10 hour next year. An Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup entry. Of course, we go to Spa, the 24-hour race in the not-too-distant future, and uh, one of the two drivers there on screen will be in the car. Of course, Bura Bura and Bhakti. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, so that's important. It wasn't Bura Bura and Bhakti. Of course, it was Andrew Harrianto, but Bura Bura and Bhakti is in that list. So to Yasser Shahin, and so to Jeffrey Lee, a man who has more starts in the cup than any other. And it will be for the Spa 24-hour race this year. So that's that coveted seat for the Suzuka 10-hour next year is up for grabs, and at the moment, it is certainly advantage Yasser Shahin. And that's a combination of the four Chinese races, correct? So we have the two that we've already had last time out in Zhuhai, yeah. plus today in Shanghai and tomorrow's race. The top point scorers from those four rounds. Of course, the uh, the top point scorer from Australia, which was Jeff Emery, who's currently still in this championship hunt. He hasn't uh, made a reappearance. We expect to see him a little bit later in the year. He will combine the points, as will all the drivers from Australia, with the, drop, the uh, points from Malaysia. And the solitary top point scorer from Japan that isn't already locked into a seat. Uh, next time out when we go to uh, Suzuka, we'll also take an entry in that three-driver field. Well, Sean, another best lap from Anthony Leo at the front at 207.8. That compares with his 206 dead in qualifying. Uh, big battle here for seconds, though, with uh, Alex Al holding on for now, but uh, Andrew Harrianto putting quite a lot of pressure on behind him. Well, we're talking about championship points. Andrew Harrianto currently has 24 points. Now, he raced both races in Australia. Unfortunately, not so well for him. Didn't go well in the opening race. He was a retirement just a few corners in after contact, interestingly, with Burt Burumbakti. 
So uh, he's having a tough start to the year, as is his uh, 2018 rival, the Thai driver, in the Singer Plan B by Absolute Entry. Let's take a look at the, re at the start, a replay of the start. Inside, left of screen, the 37 entry of Anthony Liu. It's interesting to see the windscreen wiper was already on on the 59 entry of Eric Bear and Barkley. Now, how about this move from Alex Al? And you can see Anthony Liu is already back to position four, but by the end of the lap, he's taken the lead back. Yeah. It got a little ugly here for Yasser Shahin and Andrew Harrianto, who was very, very strong off the start. He muscled his way through on the Australian driver, got up to position two, was wrong-footed on the exit of three. That gave the drive off the corner to uh, Anthony Liu. You can see how he's just on a knife edge. He's dancing the car around the circuit. The grip level's low because the tyre temperatures are low in that control Pirelli tyre. So he did a great job straight onto the tail of Alex Au and probably used his local experience. This was an incredible move down at turn eight into turn nine, the left-hander. He was back in the lead. So by turn nine of 16, Anthony Liu had the lead. And look at the advantage he has at the moment. He's just uh, holding that comfortably. Now further back, the six and the 88 are battling. And this is for GD4 honors. Very, very wide on the last corner. Could incur a uh, track limits. Penalty post race. Oh, now uh, that's beyond a tank slapper. That's completely <laughs> sideways and off the circuit. So uh, a tough run for the number 18 entry. That's Wang Dengjia who started at the rear of the field, and that is where he currently is. Now that's the car that uh, Anderson Tonoto took to the GT4 title last year. The Indonesian driver not with us again, sadly. Uh, business commitments have kept him from both Zhuhai and it turns out this weekend at Shanghai but we fully expect to see him back next time out certainly at Suzuka what a great circuit that is certainly they don't come much better than Shanghai International Circuit the emotional home of the cup this is a regular fixture in the eight seasons of the cup it's where it all started you were here then weren't you I didn't think you were that old <laughs> Sean 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 come on so the uh, absolute crew down there in pit lane as we get on with the business of calling. Look at the advantage that Anthony Liu, that is incredible. The, uh, the stretch from turn 10 to turn 11, he has that whole advantage. Now that's a lengthy part of the circuit. He's doing a great job and proving a point at the front of the field. Last time out, it was a 2.11. No, it wasn't. That was Sinjin Zhu, who's struggling further back. Yeah, so he's, he's putting in about a second and a half to two seconds each lap by the looks of things. Now there is Jing Zhu. He is further back, coming through turn 10. He is all over the back of uh, Mark and Sean. Now where is Lin Yi Ming? He's further back. So, yeah. so there might have been a drama somewhere there, unless uh, the field has just spread out a little bit. We heard earlier from... Uh, Adley Fong, former cup champion. He is uh, mentoring the two Zun Motorsport crew entries. He drives for them. He drove for them last year in one of these entries at the Macau Grand Prix. The uh, FIA GT World Cup was very strong, as we are used to seeing with Adley Fong. And uh, he said, these guys are just learning. They're getting better every time. And each time they're going out, they're finding half a second to a second uh, a lap on their previous appearance on track so very impressive also worth pointing out sean that uh, they're not driving the same models as cars some of the others in the field are they they have the older model which uh, um adley was saying was perhaps you know second or more per lap slower so, so that's something to take into account well it's interesting too the only real difference on the two zone motorsport crew entries to some of the other cars around the nose is the most notable difference there are tweaks to the car in the evolution model we, we uh, call it the Evo version of the Generation 2 Audi R8 LMS GT3. The nose is where it sort of, it, it does look different. Now the two Zorn Motorsport crew entries were very late model releases 2018. They just didn't have the extra bodywork. So they haven't changed that. But a lot of the, uh, the technology in the Evolution version is in those two uh, black and pink cars, the two Zorn Motorsport crew entries. We see they're further back in the field. They are now in positions number 10 and 11. Well, Vincent Florendo coming under an immense amount of pressure from Sun Jing Zhu, and it looks to be that Jing Zhu is going to make a move any moment now. Mark Chung just uh, holding back. This is the battle for 8th, 9th and 10th on screen. But uh, Anthony Leo continuing to uh, pull ahead at the front of the field. But at the moment, Vincent Florendo Interesting driver, Vincent. He's uh, it's some, sometimes it sort of quietly confident. Um, seems seems uh, not not always at his best level, but uh, but but has put in some pretty decent results. He certainly has. I mean, two times on the podium last time around. Here he is battling towards the the tail end of the top ten. It shows you just how competitive it is. You have to have everything work together nicely for you. One slight slip 
or slightly off the pace or not quite get a corner right and you can lose position. Oh, big dive up the inside. Has he gone into deep? Jingzi, yes he has. But he's able to close the door on the exit. Now he's gone in too deep again as he's got into the Parabolica. <laughs> and that's just allowed Mark Chun to go down the inside. So that's opened the door for the uh, young driver from the Zun Motorsport crew. He's taken that very willingly. Nice job. And that all was a result of uh, Jingzi getting it all wrong going down to turn number 11, the left-hander. And the main thing is getting the drive off the Parabolic here to power down this very, very long main straight. Ooh. Oh, that. that is uh, Tony, Tony Bates, Bates battling and, uh, with Bird Birumbakti. Geez, no quarter given. That is uh, that is impressive. As close as you like. A little bit of smoke. They've carried on. Well, a little bit of argy bargy. Some, some flashing lights. Certainly some bumping there. Yeah, not happy with the. Uh, well, Bates is behind at the moment. Uh, he seems to have recovered somewhat from his from his <laughs> heavy head cold that you were talking about, Sean. But. Uh, the moment he is behind the Burritt, and this is the battle for sixth position. So battles all over, and then just behind, as we pan out there, we can see Sun Jing Zhu trying to hold off Mark Chung. Lights flashing from Tony Bates. I don't think he's all that happy. He's not happy with his own performance this weekend. He's a very, very competitive driver. He's won multiple races at home in Australia. He won a round of the championship at Adelaide to kick off the season. He knows that circuit like the back of his hand. But Burrett too, he was the season high four round winner last year. He took the championship fight all the way to the last round here. Oh, sorry, to uh, Sepang International Circuit in Malaysia against Andrew Harrianto. He only just lost it right at the end. Remember that big spin he had? He just got a little bit wide, a couple of wheels on the grass, had a spin, didn't hit anything. Had to concede the position to Andrew Harrianto, who went on to his third win and to seal the championship. So they were very, very close to see him so far back in the field. He'll be frustrated with this. Burt Berenbach is a much better driver than the position he currently sees himself in. You've also got a frustrated Australian in Tony Bates. I'm sure there's some frustration in the number 13 blue entry that's uh, the full length of the back straight behind them in Jingzu because he started quite strongly too and he's further back than he needed. But we we're just talking about Vincent Ferrendo. He sees himself now in position 10, yet last round he was in position 3 twice. He managed to get everything all together. This is a different kind of circuit too. You have to remember this is a Formula 1 style circuit. So this really does reward a driver with great experience like Anthony Yu who knows this circuit intimately. He's done a lot of miles around Shanghai International Circuit. And it's the mid to high speed corners where the experienced drivers will be able to shine. And we talk about experience, so too Alex Au is doing a very good job. But he too will know that what's the point of pushing any harder than I need to? I've got two sets of the control Michelin tires, sort of control Pirelli tires for the weekend, and I need to make them last. So why push any harder than I have to? Because at the moment, Andrew Harrianto isn't closing in on his tail. Well, that's right, and Anthony Leo is now coming up for about 15 seconds ahead of Alex out of the front, but he's out of the championship battle uh, with about half of this race remaining. So pretty good performance from Alex. Certainly much better than he had, certainly had without the bad luck, at least so far, that he had in Juhai. So he'll be pretty happy with, with uh, how things are at the moment. It's field spreading out a little bit more. We haven't seen too much of that so far this year. It's been very racy, very tight, very close, and a lot of action over the previous four rounds. So this one's been a little bit more uh, pedestrian after that opening lap, of course. Anthony Liu doing a great job and battling his way through to the front of the field. But uh, Yasser Shahin, championship points leader, he's doing everything he needs to. He's sitting in position for a good haul of points. This is putting him in a great position to take that coveted first seat for the Suzuka 10 hour next year. Angelin Negro is doing a really good job too on his debut in the cup in the car that uh, Daniel Bilski took to uh, second in the championship so far. He was very, very strong too. So the Australian, the former Masters and Am Cup champion in the cup, driving a course alongside Hank Kicks in the Blanc Pain GT World Challenge Asia Championship. We'll see them back-to-back uh, -back races in Japan coming before too much longer. They're also a big part of the Thailand Super Series and right in that championship. They ran a uh, all new 2019 Evo with all the latest bodywork, all the latest uh, tweaks on the car. They saw that car at uh, the first couple of rounds of Blanc Pain were very, very competitive. So uh, it was good to have Daniel Bilski back. Not here this weekend, but uh, certainly subbing with Angelo Negro is doing a great job in that 48 entry. I love the colours, the new style for 2019 for Audi Sport. Very, very iconic. Well, he is, and he's uh, hanging on to the back of Yasser Shahin, just a couple of seconds behind there. 
but certainly within touch. He's had some uh, fairly decent sector times recently. Negro uh, in fifth position with the championship leader Yasser Shahin in fourth. So that might be a battle to keep an eye on as we come into the final 12 minutes or so, plus that additional lap after the clock comes down to zero. So there is the leader of the GT4 category, Shengyang Wen, in the FEA entry. The FEA team are running a couple of cars this weekend. That's a great program. Oh, there is the race leader around the outside. Boy, look at the closing speed difference. And uh, Shengyang Wen, well, he, uh, he saw Anthony Liu coming, gave him a lot of racing room, and he's comfortably at the front of that field. He's currently fifth in championship points. The race leader, or the championship points leader, Lee Lin. It's a shared between Lee Lin and Mark Williamson, who is very strong in Australia. Um, Ang Wei Chen is in position number three, or Tommy Chen. And we saw him very successful last time out. The motorsport driver, of course, a local at uh, the Juhai. Well, Hong Kong drivers called Juhai their home circuit. And since Noto also back there, he's just two points off the championship points lead. We hope to see him again soon, but well, so far, good for Shen. Well, Sean, that's right. With Sean, uh, Yang Wen, 25 points uh, in GT4 championship standings today, and he'll just be five points off the front of that championship, so he could have a healthy lead coming out of Shanghai, given that some of his rivals are not here. Of course, that's that's a great championship too. We've got GT3 honours, we've got uh, GT4 honours, and uh, things really are getting mixed up through this championship this year, and that's exactly what we want to see. Challenger Trophy Drivers 2. That has been a great competition. There is Anderson Tonodo's entry, the number 18 this time round. Deng Jiao Wang. He is just been taken by Alex Au, who has a comfortable margin over Andrew Harrianto. So we get to about two thirds race distance, 30 minutes plus race lap for the leader, or one lap for the race leader. After 30 minutes, they cross the line. And this will give us the midpoint of the season, eighth season of the Cup. It's amazing to even say that. What a great championship it has been over so many years. We've seen some epic drives, certainly at this circuit. Remember that great one between Alex Jung and Alessio Piccarello a couple of years ago? Yep. Martin Kittle right a screen. The weatherman right. left a screen. Rahel Fry, the first female victor yes, in, the, in the Cup here that in Shanghai. was brilliant. So it really has been a uh, great event over recent years. We look forward to seeing Martin Rump and Wei Ron Tan in a couple of weeks' time at uh, Suzuka International Circuit for the Blancpain Series. They are right in the mix, the two uh, Silver Cup drivers. Very, very competitive. Oh, that's uh, not... Oh, wow! Alex Al, he was wrong-footed. He had eyes forward, got caught in the wrong part of the circuit. And I'm sure that uh, Sheng Yun Wen was just trying to move over and give him some ground, just as he did for Anthony. But look what that's done now. That's opened the door for Andrew Harrianto. I can see what's going on under that helmet. The number 28 will have a sniff. Here is a chance to get back into this championship. Some valuable points. I'm going to get past Alex Howe. He's going to push really, really hard. And we've uh, almost uh, forgotten to mention it, but uh, Andrew Harrianto, of course, the reigning champion, but he has such a disappointing start to the season that he's probably the first person to write himself off. He was asking us earlier in the week, John, who do you think is going to win? Who's going to be? Are we going to have a new champion? It's only four races out of ten, Andrew, come on, not, the, not too early. Well, I mean, we're talking about on the grid, he seems to have his mojo back, he's got the smile back, he's got the laugh back, we love seeing him on the grid, he's always great to have a chat to, and he'd lost that mojo a little bit at Juhai. He blamed himself a little bit for some of the contact that happened. Of course, this is racing, they're not out here to just, well, it's not tiddlywinks, is it? They're not out here to just <laughs> circulate and, and go after you. No, after you, it, it's racing. This is all happening at 200 plus kilometres per hour. Incidents happen and sometimes it's just unlucky, whether you believe in luck or not. But for Andrew Harriander, it was a tough weekend after a tough opening in Australia. But he recovered with that great run in the second race, round four at Juhai. Remember that big dive down the uh, the final corner in damp conditions behind Burt Bear and Barker? We thought, oh no, here we go again. And he closed right in, but let his uh, his rival from the 2018 season through for his first win, and both of them valuable championship points. And this is what Andrew Harrianto needs. It's going to bring him right back into the mix. Well, it's interesting that, you know, the interaction between some of the drivers sometimes after the races, they're so apologetic. You'd think they'd be, they would be doing exactly that. After you, please. No, no, after you, on the track. They just can't help themselves. These, these guys are racers. They're very competitive. Get behind the wheel and they just want to win, and they just want to overtake and get as far up the field as possible. So, Andrew, there he is, flashing the, flashing the lights. It doesn't typically work, but uh, good to see that he's thinking v about very it. Very Alessio Picarillo-esque. Yeah. 
We saw that in the past. Behind guys, the calibre of Alex Young doesn't always work so well. Although, having said that, we did see Alex trip over at one point and uh, have a spin. I think that was at Suzuka a couple of years ago with the driver behind him. Might have been Sean Thong at that stage just flashing the light saying, come on, Grandpa, move it along. It's getting a little bit dark and gloomy, so perhaps those lights might just put him off. No, I think they're all pretty right. I think uh, Frankie's prediction was pretty right. Wayron nailed it as well. It's, uh, it's just one of those things. We don't get a lot of rain here usually uh, during racing for, uh, for Shanghai. We haven't seen a lot of uh, really wet events. Of course, WC's faced some absolute corkers here in past years as it has come to this circuit. But, uh, yeah, we've been pretty lucky as we get into under seven minutes to go. I don't know that Harry Anto's got anything to throw at uh, Alex. Alex is just eyes forward again. He had a comfortable margin. It was up by four or five seconds. That all closed out when they uh, went around Schengen win in the GD4 entry. And uh, that has opened the door again. Well, Not sometimes just hanging around is going to be good enough. Now, interestingly, Angelo Negro just behind these two is... Uh, is some pretty good lap times, picking up some time on Yasser Shahin. We'll have to take a look at uh, the battle for fourth position to see whether he's going to have a chance to overtake him, but uh, still out of the podium positions with these two in second and third here. Well, it's good to see the pace has finally come off at the front of the field. Uh, Anthony Lewis dropped from 207s to 208s. He's about four or five seconds a lap faster than just about everybody. He's absolutely flying. 210.9 second fastest for Andrew Harrianto. 211.7s for Burrett, so his pace has picked up. 210.4 for uh, Angelo Negro, second fastest on track behind the Chinese driver at the front of this field, Anthony Liu. Well, I'm looking his, his forward to the uh, the press conference, I have to say, because he always makes it very interesting. <laughs> to you. He's very forgiving of the media. <laughs> yes, we'll look forward to that. Well, this is what I was talking about, Sean. Angelo Negro closing right up Perfect. on Yasser Shahin. Uh, and with five minutes to go, plenty of opportunities. Not sure if, uh, if Yasser has a problem or not, but this could be a fantastic battle in the closing laps. Well, certainly Negro can see that, uh, that well, Yasser's suffering a little bit. This isn't the pace we're used to seeing from this train drive. Very, very committed, very quick very calculating and certainly Angelo is uh, all of those things and it just doesn't seem to be working in Yasser's favour this time around. Ben Motorsport Park driver, of course uh, second longest permanent racing facility in the world. Oh, as Negro's just got it all wrong as we've talked him up. Well, not all wrong. I mean, he's gone a little bit wide there as we get back to this battle for second between Alex Au and Andrew Harrianto. It looks as if Alex has got that covered. And uh, with Angelo just getting a little bit wide there too, that may have opened the door for Yasser to just consolidate that position back in fourth position. Burrett back in position number six. Tony Bates in position seven. Quite sure what the gap between those two will be. Jingzu is still in position eight. Market Sean in position nine has got the better of Vincent Burrett. Well, Anthony Neal coming up to complete what will be his 12th lap. And we have four and a half minutes plus one additional lap before the end of this race. He still has a comfortable lead at the top of the field from these two on your screen. Alex Auer from Hong Kong and then Andrew Harianto in third position. Then there's a little bit of a gap to this. Well, Negro again is caught back up after that little mistake you mentioned, Sean. And he is putting a lot of pressure here on Yasser Shahin. Well, he's closed that up pretty quickly. So that tends to suggest Yasser's got uh, a number of dramas that he's dealing with. We saw, of course, uh, he very nearly lost a podium position in Australia with a technical issue late in the race that meant he couldn't pull up a gear, which uh, he just had to hang in there and get to the end of the race, cross the line a mere couple of car lengths ahead, I think, of Daniel Bilski at the stage. So uh, it really was a tight run for him, so frustrating. But these things happen. This is part of racing. But, uh, not necessarily always perfect. You have to overcome this. Burrumbark, he's a fabulous one for this. We heard him say it a number of times last year. Just forget about what happened yesterday. Marchie Lee, former cup champion, always used to say, drivers are pretty stupid at the end of the day. We forget about the bad things that happened on day one. We come back fresh and new on day two and just try it all again. Put it out of your mind and just get on with it. Two different approaches. I think I prefer uh, Burrett's approach of uh, holistically <laughs> relaxing and just calm. And, and it's a different day tomorrow. Forget what happened. Well, these two in fourth and fifth. Burrett in sixth behind them, and he's pulled away a little bit uh, away from Tony Bates in seventh with Sun Jing Zhu in eighth, Mark Chung in ninth, and Vincent Florendo rounding out the top ten. So, Negro, what can he do here with Yasser Shahin firmly in his sights? It looks like Yasser's responded, though. Well, I think he also understands Yasser's the championship points leader. That could go one of two ways. 
in reality, he won't want to upset Yasser's championship. Coming in at round five of ten, you're not really going to put yourself in a position you wouldn't expect to battle for the championship win. So is it vital to get past Yasser Shahin? Probably not, because if the roles were reversed, you wouldn't want somebody dive-bombing you in the last couple of laps. Yeah, that's, that's not uh, looking 100% happy. Unfortunately, to uh, the seven entry, just the, coming onto the parabolica there, it just didn't seem to have the speed. Now, that could have been a lens issue and uh, just our position that we were looking at the car, but it just didn't seem as well settled as uh, Angelina Negro. But maybe he'll make a move. If he can make a safe move, of course he'll make a move. But uh, Yasser is in the championship. That's what he's thinking about. He will make that car as wide as possible to make sure that Negro can't get past him at the moment. He's just off a podium, but. Yeah, drive out of the corner. He's pretty much stopping the car in a straight line and then firing it up again. He's not carrying a lot of mid-corner speed, it seems, Yasser Shahin. So, uh, oh, yep, yeah, OK, for Negro. Just a little bit of oversteer on the exit. He got out of that one, and that's allowed Yasser to just extend that advantage again. Fastest third sector to the man leading the race. So he's yeah. cranking up the wick again. He's already uh, almost half the circuit ahead of the field. He's really just charging through. Alex Au again doesn't need to do anything more than he's doing. He's comfortably got position two covered at the moment over Andrew Harrianto and this is the battle. Tony Bates is now under fire from Jingzu but again Tony Bates despite being a well accomplished driver he would expect himself to be battling for the front of the field. He's got a shocking head cold, suffered badly with lost time yesterday due to the fact that he he'd suffered a migraine, was ill outside of the car all the things were working against him, and this is his first time here. So against most of his rivals, I don't think there's anyone else in this field who hasn't before been to this circuit. Well, he's got to watch out here, Sean, because I'm sure he's getting more and more tired as this race goes on. And Jingzu was very much, uh, well, setting up in his sights there. And he can be pretty fast when he's on it. So Vincent Florendo's dropped off the tail of the 77 Zoom Motorsport crew entry of uh, Mark and Sean. He's working his way through the uh, GT4s. You can see how close they are, though. I mean, that is Shang uh, Yenwen in the uh, number six entry, and he's not too far ahead of his rival as we go back with the race leader. 12 seconds to go, 11, 10. I think this could be very close to uh, second last lap. What happens when he comes to the line? Is the board out? Last lap board is out. Well, yeah, that's interesting because uh, he's crossed the line already. OK, I'm not going to pin, yeah. uh, pin my hopes <laughs> on that one. He could well have a couple of laps to go. But let's just see at the moment he's done everything right. And uh, Anthony you well, no real surprise, to be honest, having seen him before. A couple of people said to me, what's the prediction for this, uh, this gentleman? We've not seen him before. Uh, how will he go? Well, having seen him pull out an absolute blinder five years ago, the first time I ever saw him on this circuit, he's uh, well and truly capable of what he's... Oh, here we go. Now, Angelo Negro again is really closed in behind Yasser Shah, and he's got good drive out of the final corner. Yasser will keep him as wide as humanly possible unless he can get all the way around and pull across in front at the breaking point. I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, it, 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 well, it is. OK, there you go. Don't listen to me. Up the inside comes Yasser Shah in. What does he have for Angelo Negro coming through the back? Well, I guess we're not going to find out right now. Well, there we go. We're back. He's done it. Well, that was a pretty nice move from the Italian there, but disappointment for Yasser Shah in the championship leader slipping down well, to That makes things fifth. interesting for Burr and Barkley too, because the, they're equal on points in this battle for that uh, seat at uh, Suzuka next year. That's they're right, now yeah. in positions five and six, so yeah. there's still only two points separating them. So that battle will go down to tomorrow's second race. Of course, you make sure you stay with us. We're qualifying for round six tomorrow morning at 9.05 a.m. local time. And we go through to round number six of the championship at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. So whilst Anthony Liu is certainly storming around Shanghai International Circuit, his home circuit, he's not in the championship battle as things stand right now. If he keeps doing this, he might find himself very quickly in the championship <laughs> battle. But uh, that is why his rivals will have just let him go, because there's not much they can do about it, and they don't need to be battling him, and potentially not finishing this race as he comes to the final corner. Well, absolutely perfect day for him with uh, qualifying, getting that extra point for pole position, and of course the fastest lap time, and now the race win for Anthony Leo here in round five of the Cup. So he's done all three, just a minor blip in context now, but, uh, but uh, the beginning of the race suddenly went back to fourth position, but as you said, by turn nine, 
back in the lead and then didn't look back. He loves a race, uh, he loves to fight for a win too, so uh, he was really pushing very, very hard and he used that experience certainly going through turn eight around the outside of Alex Howe. He knew where the grip levels were, he knew what he could do and uh, he certainly deserved that win. Great points for Alex Howe to take second in the CTV race, CTVS races entry. Andrew Harry Anto across the line in position three. And uh, Angelo Negro gets the better of Yasser Shahin. I don't think he'll be 100% happy. I don't think the car was 100% happy. So that was a tough run for him. But for the championship points leader, he retains that advantage going into round six. His closest rival for the championship points as it stands at the moment. Tony Bates further back behind him. So too Burit Burin Barkti. So uh, there is Tony Bates still hanging on to position seven and uh, Jingzu closing in. We suspect Jingzu suffered some dramas off the start of the race. He dropped well back in amongst the GD4. So Bates is pretty happy that uh, he's got that result in the bag. His debut run here at Shanghai International Circuit. Mark Chum in the 77 entry for the Zun Motorsport crew in position number nine. Vincent Florendo a little bit further back. It was a great battle for about positions eight, nine, 10 and 11 during the mid part of this race. The two Zun Motorsport crews entries uh, split by Vincent Florendo. Birimbakti in that battle too. Birimbakti got away from them. And uh, here we are back at the front of the field. Nice return to the cup for the local driver, Anthony Liu. Got to come up with something witty and insightful for the uh, press conference to see what he can fire back at me. Yeah. <laughs> well, just to recap, Anthony Liu with the win. Alex Au and Andrew Harianto joining him on the podium. Angelo Negro in fourth. Yasser Shahin, the championship leader, will extend his lead. Uh, despite finishing in fifth, uh, Burit Berenbakdi in sixth, Tony Bates in seventh, Sun Jing Zhu in eighth, then came Mark Chung and Vincent Florendo, Lin Yiming eleventh, Sheng Yanwen and Wang Dengjia rounding out the field. So Sheng Yanwen, as we said, now 40 points in the GT4 championship standings, just five points off the lead. So if he can turn in another solid performance tomorrow, he's in very good shape heading into Suzuka. He's been up, coming on for Anthony Liu as he comes through uh, turn 14 there. So perhaps a light rain starting, who knows? But uh, at the moment, it doesn't look too bad. He's done what he needed to do. That is a nice, solid haul of points. And that really does mix things up. So, so far in this championship, we've had, well, one, two, three, four, and now five different winners this year. That really does mix things up. Well, a nice win on Children's Day, which is a pretty big deal here in China, Sean, for Anthony Leo, who's had his family with him at the track. We'll see who's there to celebrate with him as he gets out of the car now, but he'll certainly be happy with his return to the cup. Well, I can get to uh, circulate quite comfortably around Shanghai this evening. The uh, handshake still works. You missed that. <laughs> it's a tradition for uh, some time. It turned out that uh, I'd shake his hand on the grid in past years and they'd go on and win. So he, need, he needed me to make sure I shook his hand. Right, right, right. Okay. A couple yes, of times yeah, they did, did so drop the ball. So might, I think, yeah. might be a rough, rough morning for you tomorrow then, Sean. It could be. <laughs> anyway, no, that was a great result. It's nice to see him back in the cup. He is a great competitor too. So too is Alex Howe, of course. He's a big favourite of ours. He's, uh, he's driving the CDVS races entry, of course. And uh, we'll hear from... Anthony shortly down there with Sophie Lee and uh, another solid haul of points for Andrew Harrianto. And that's good because that, that'll put the smile back on his dial and uh, give him a little bit of confidence. That's and right. he can work his way back into this championship. You can go matter down there, the team boss of Absolute Racing, keeping a close eye on things. Martin Rump coming across to uh, congratulate Anthony Liu. And, uh, of course, the battle for the field further down. Market Chun doing a great job. Angelo Negro doing a great job. R really very, very impressive. Well, Sophie's down there with Anthony Leo. Let's go down to see what he has to say on his race victory today. Well,非常祝贺刘旭获得了奥运动二八了。那所以在上海站的第一场比赛正赛的冠军，那其实今天你车上有二十公斤负重，你自己刚刚发车的时候都不知道。但是今天的这个比赛看上去是非常轻松的
呃还好吧，就就第一弯呃一号弯追回来两个位置，然后六号弯七号弯再追回来，然后就，你看，就就就就就这样。But today's competition is actually a very exciting race. Congratulations, Pouch Wing. And Anthony just summarizes the race because I'm not quite so familiar with the track for a very long period of time. Today, carry 20 kg. It's not as challenging as I thought. Today, carry 20 kg. It's not as challenging as it looks. Congratulations, once again. Thank you. 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 He doesn't know the track. I think he knows it pretty well, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, no comment. Uh, a true racer. The one thing he wanted to know is, did I get the fastest lap? Maybe I was a little bit rusty. I just wanted to get back quickly because it looked like it might rain. I didn't want to get my, my boots wet. Anyway, looks like Sophie is back down on the grid, hopefully with Alex Al. At the very beginning, you try to get on, on, on the first out of first. So how do you feel about the whole race today, and especially with the such competitive Anthony just next to you? Well, he made it even more interesting by uh, letting me uh, went ahead of him on the start. So I thought, OK, I'm not, he's not going to be behind me for long. I just hope that when he go past me, I don't lose uh, a lot of time, or you know, he, he touches me, or something affecting my race. So. Yes, normally I would race harder, but you know, a championship at stake and with DNF and DNS in uh, Zhuhai, I really need all the points. So I'd rather settle for second than to block him the whole race. So, Thanks a lot, Alex. And back to you guys. Well, Sean, that's exactly what you said. I mean, he was very much focused on the championship point, particularly after that massive double disappointment in Zhuhai. Interestingly, he, he pretty much had written off uh, trying to stay ahead of Anthony Leo. Clearly, they, uh, they, they know how quick he is. Well, Sophie looks like she may well have the reigning champion down there with her, Andrew Harriento. A reigning champion, Andrew. Coming back to Shanghai, is this one of the most challenging races for the for this year so far? Uh, that would be too high or Adelaide. No, this one's, I hopefully uh, should be okay. Um, I just don't have the pace. I'm still lacking a couple of seconds to Anthony, so I need to work a lot. Yeah. And congrats to Anthony and Alex, who did a superb job. Yeah. Okay, push and uh, good luck for tomorrow. I'll cross back to your guys upstairs. Where were we? <laughs> no, well, nice result. I mean, the funny thing was, you're talking about how they kind of written the championship off. Andrew Harrianto kind of said that by due height. Yeah. And then, of course, Alex Al felt like that after the last round. Now, they're, they're rebuilding championship points. I'm sure Burr Burr and Barkley feels a similar thing. He'll be frustrated with this weekend's result. Tony Bates also. Yasser Shahin. Anyway, let's go back to highlights from round five of the championship, the midpoint of the 2019 season. Off the start. This is where it all happened, down at turn one, two. This is what this circuit is famous for, and we saw it again. Windscreen wiper on Burr Burr and Barkley. Might have just bumped something as he got ready to go because we didn't see any rain across this race and the run off the line to Alex Al straight through to the lead and then he had three wide Yasser Shahin on the outside Harry Anto on the inside and right in the middle was Anthony Liu he ejected himself from that there was a little bit of contact between Harry Anto and Yasser Shahin that opened the door again for Anthony Liu you could see him just back out of the throttle there he jumped harder on the on the brakes he got better drive out of turn three that gave him back the second position and by the time he got down to turn nine around the outside of Alex Al. Again, Alex thinking about championship. He didn't need to battle too hard for that position. Difference between uh, the two positions in this race, 25 and 18, only seven points lost. We saw a little bit of action further back in the field as the GD4 race wound on. A little bit of off track excursion too as uh, the number 18 entry. <laughs> Regathered things, Wang Dingya, and then this uh, great battle further back. And there'd been a drama somewhere off the start, off screen. We're watching this fantastic battle at the front of the field. We missed what had happened further back, but quite clearly, Sun Jing Zhu had a drama. And then how about this for a bit of muscling for position? Tony Bates wasn't giving it up easily. And uh, Burt Berenbakti, well, we know he's quite happy to work his way forward. Doesn't like contact, very uh, conservative driver. That's one thing he always tries to avoid. But he needed to get that position back. And then this one, unfortunately, for uh, Cheng Yang Wen, he was trying to give Alex Al room. Well, Alex Al wound up being a tractor going down the inside of the circuit, through the grass, managed to carry on, but that closed the gap up back to Andrew Harrianto. And Harrianto, you see top of screen, really did close in. It got very, very close. Then Yasser Shahin had to battle Angelo Negro on his debut in the championship. 
And this was a great battle too. And uh, Negro just had better drive out of the final corner, got past Yasser and managed to come through. Ultimately though, no one could stop the local driver. I've seen it before. He's a very accomplished driver around this circuit. He's just proven it again. Shanghai International Circuit is a favorite. This man's quite an accomplished driver. We'll get to that a little bit later. He's a couple of uh, Guinness World Records to his name. He certainly got one for an outright speed record, but uh, he's now bagged a victory again in the Cup. So congratulations, congratulations to Anthony Liu. Well, it was an interesting race. Not uh, not the thriller minute that we've had so far uh, earlier in some of the other races this season, but uh, certainly plenty of uh, sort of longer-term battles around the track, all over the field, in fact, all the way down to, uh, to GT4. But a pretty dominant performance by Anthony Liu. And Sean... You know, if, if he if he carries on that pace, he's he's going to be odds on for the for, for another win tomorrow. Does Alex Al just just try and look to pick up more championship points with second again? I think that's all he can do. I mean, he's got a he's they've got a solid advantage over where Anthony Liu is at the moment. He's come into the championship in round five. Okay, he's had a comfortable win. Tomorrow is a different day. It could rain tomorrow. Anything could happen tomorrow. Things can get mixed up. We've seen that this year. All of the favourites at the start of this season, certainly the way Andrew Harrianto came into season 2019, you would have expected he'd be right in the mix again. He's having to work his way through from the tail of the top ten to get towards the front again. Alex Au, he was the favourite. Everybody had picked him as the man to run away with that Juhai round quite comfortably from practice to qualifying. Burt Burren Barkley's had trouble. Yasser Shahin has a comfortable lead. But even yesterday, when we did a quick interview with him for the 24-minute uh, the magazine program, he was saying, still, 22 points is not enough, Sean. It needs to be bigger than that. So uh, he's conscious of that particular points lead. Well, let's go down to the podium celebration as the drivers pick up their trophies and have their moment in, uh, well, not exactly the sun, but on the steps. Great result for Alex Howe, Anthony Liu, of course, the winner. Nice points for Andrew Harrianto. And uh, what a good end result for the championship that was, because this really does mix things up, Mark Dryer. That's what we want. We don't want anybody running away with this championship, although uh, looks like Anthony Liu's pretty keen to uh, run away to the press conference. We've had so many times where it goes right down to the wire to uh, the final race of the season. Uh, too early to predict if that's going to happen again. I suppose the only slight disappointment from Alex now is picking up very valuable championship points. But, uh, of course, Anthony Leal not coming in as a guest driver. So uh, Alex just getting the 18 points rather than the 25 he might have had. You look at uh, the outright pace. He takes that uh, coveted pottery Pirelli cap. I've got to come up with another word for that. But anyway, 207.8 fastest lap. That is the uh, the prize for the fastest lap award for Pirelli to Anthony Liu. 209.35 for Alex Aus. That's a second and a half the advantage that uh, Anthony Liu has around this circuit. It shouldn't quite be that far. That's not a real true story of the outright pace of Alex Aus nor of Andrew Harrianto. 
but uh, certainly there is an advantage too. You've done some maths. I'm a little concerned. I know you are. You, I, I knew you were going to say that. I could see you so working is, that out. This is particularly unofficial at this stage. <laughs> nice uh, job, Alex. How you spray <laughs> the champagne over the top to see if you can't get. <laughs> He's going to go for the second shot. But Sean, how about this for the standings? Yasser Shine, 80 points. Then a huge gap to Tony Bates on 50. Then Burritz on 49, and Bilski and Alex Howe both on 48. Game on. Unbelievably close Game there on. for second. And 25 points to uh, Anthony Liu, which could be 50 the way he's going come tomorrow. That's so right. that could really mix things up. Still a lot to play for in this championship. Well, Yasser Shahin finishing in fifth, but uh, sitting pretty happy at the moment. But you're right, one race and things can change around very, very quickly. Well, he's extended that advantage very, very nicely. You've pinched my uh, overall form. What was it? 22 points coming into this round. 70 to 48. It's now yes. 30. And uh, now it's out to 30. So uh, he might be a tad frustrated, but he's certainly he's made that work. So Vincent Florendo on the podium. Good marker, Chun. I would expect, based on the, uh, the outright result, where's Vincent? Yeah. And uh, top spot in that one will go to Angelo Negro. There he is, and deservedly so. Fourth after that great battle with Yasser Shahin, the championship points leader over the closing stages. Earns himself some, uh, some valuable points. The Challenger Trophy. Good job by him. Mark Chun will be happy with that too. He did, a, uh, he did a nice job in the end, so hang on. Then Ming really fell away towards the end but uh, don't have the same level of experience around this circuit as uh, some of the more outright competitors. Certainly Anthony Liu, you could put him right up there with the very best as things stand at the moment. And uh, Angelo Negro, it, was, it sounds very popular. I can hear a lot of cheering down here below us. Mark Chen, only 20 years old, but uh, according to Adley Fung, who's been... Uh, Coaching, of course, both the Zun Motorsport crew guys. Very quick, very quick to learn and improve. And uh, each session, they said, because of that lack of experience, they're, uh, they're still in a pretty steep learning curve. So it uh, must be quite uh, satisfying from the, from the coaching point of view to, to really make a big difference to these guys. Vincent Florendo would have to be pretty happy. Three uh, three return races this year, three times on the podium. Yep. He's got a good haul of uh, trophies so far. Outright third, both races at Ju High International Circuit. So that was a nice end result too for him great to have family involved very much the cup is family we're talking to uh, Martin Cool. there is left of screen the director of Audi Sport Customer Racing Asia he's been here since the start CTVS have been here we're all a big family here from the start you've been here for uh, quite some time you're like part of the furniture <laughs> just don't sell on me <laughs> not much chance of that being a problem <laughs> But Angelo Negro, he is a rookie in this championship. Uh, Vincent's uh, been here in the past. He's done a, uh, a few past runs. And uh, Marka Chun, another rookie in the championship. So it's great. It's attracting more drivers from different parts of the region. And uh, certainly this does mix things up. So a nice result. Well, just the two bottles for GT4. And this will be uh, Sheng Yanwen and Wang Dengjia. Sheng Yanwen will now just be, well, just a handful of points. He was way down coming into Shanghai, but will just be five points off the championship lead with all his main rivals missing. Of course, the GT4 version of the Audi R8 LMS is, well, effectively a lot of it is still GD3 car. It's still very much based on the uh, on the same platform. A little bit less aero. Engine is the same. A lot of the uh, drive rage, electronics, etc., is the same. Braking slightly different from memory. Certainly the aero is a big difference. So outright straight line speed, you'll actually find the GD4 is faster than the GD3 because of that huge aero. But under brakes and certainly carrying mid corner speed. Shang Yanwen bringing his family as well. This is great. This is love seeing this. We don't see this too we often. This yeah. year has really kicked on a lot. And again, we get back to, we're joking, a little bit tongue in cheek talking about family, but that's what the atmosphere is like. Some of these drivers that are very serious that come into the championship. Great to see Jeffrey Matner, man from Adelaide. 
Super Loop 500 event. It's an annual fixture. Of course, we started our season there and see the Australian back. He's still charging on. He's your dad, isn't he? Grandpa. Great, great. <laughs> Sorry, sure, of course, yes. He, he keeps telling me I'm his brother. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> No, no, it, it is, uh, as you said, it, I mean, uh, as I mentioned before, it is Children's Day, which is a pretty big deal here in China, but so nice that they've allowed, first of all, that the kids are here to support the dance at the track, but also that they've allowed them to join them on the podium as well. These pictures will be memories for life and perhaps the next generation of drivers. So the final podium pictures are being taken, which will wrap up proceedings for round five of the cup and we will be back tomorrow for round six for qualifying in the morning local time in shanghai and then come on what what local time 9.05 a.m tomorrow cst <laughs> well, <laughs> numbers i love this a little bit this. aggro sean it's been a long day and, and we go, of course, <laughs> through to round six of the championship, which starts the second half of the eighth season of the Cup at 3 p.m. Thank you very much. CST tomorrow afternoon. So stay with us. All the social media platforms on the website. We will keep you up to date. It's a fantastic season. Today has really mixed things up. Congratulations to the drivers. We'll talk to you tomorrow.